Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us over your lunch hour today for another one of our West webinars. My name is Lola de Bogan, and I am West Marketing and Admin Assistant. It is March Marketing Madness, and to kick off this awesome series is Ashley Drummond, CEO of Wow Factor Media. Our topic today is Set Your Goal and Market Like Mad, a guide to online marketing success for small businesses. If you have any questions for Ashley as we go through the presentation, please feel free to submit them in the Q&A box, not the regular chat box. However, do feel free to use the regular chat box to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your business. And as always, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing. Um, you'll receive an email tomorrow at this time with a link to the recording. With that, I will now pass it over to you, Ashley, to now begin the presentation. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, my name is Ashley, and I'm going to be uh, giving you some helpful tips on how to market in today's world with the pandemic and how to see the forest for the trees and set your goals so that you can achieve the most that you get the most that you can out of your marketing. So I'm just going to share my screen here. All righty. So, um, as she had said, I'm Ashley Drummond from Wow Factor Media, and we are proudly um, the leaders in Saskatchewan for social media marketing services. A little bit about us. Um, we are a team of 23 dispersed throughout Saskatchewan. We have offices in Saskatoon, Regina, and Moose Jaw. And what we do for a living is we help businesses and organizations excel online. And how we do that is through uh, social media marketing, uh, website creation, graphic design, and we have recently integrated um, fully funded uh, social media marketing training through the government of Saskatchewan through the uh, RSTS grant. So those are our main lines of business of how we help businesses thrive. Um, yeah, and this is, a, this is a snapshot of our team about me. Um, I am a new but proud WESC member. Um, I'm the former director of marketing at Wow Factor Media. And <clears throat> just recently, I became the CEO of Wow Factor Media. So that's me in a nutshell. Okay, so when we talk about social media marketing, uh, we want to talk about why it's so important. I mean, probably everybody on this call is involved with social media marketing at some capacity with your business. But um, I really need to drive home the sheer importance of why it needs to become a top priority for every business, especially during the pandemic. <clears throat> so 67% <clears throat> of Canadians use social media every day. 90% of Canadians aged 24 to 39 use social media every day. So this is our millennial group. 54% um, of Canadians use social to research brands. So over half of us are using it to see if we want to interact or buy from a business. And the average time spent by Canadians on social media per day is over two hours. And Canada actually has the highest penetration in the world. So simply put, social media is where your audiences and your customers are spending their time, and it's the best way to connect with them. Okay, so <clears throat> since the pandemic has went down, <clears throat> excuse me, social media marketing and consumer behavior on social media has changed. Um, since, especially in Saskatchewan with Saskatchewan audiences, since we had our shutdown, I guess, in March, um, due to the pandemic, social media usership went through the roof and we haven't seen a decline since then. Uh, typically we, we see like uh, seasonal trends where like use happens big in the summertime. And then again, like during Christmas and like we see these patterns happening that are pretty consistent, not in 2020. In 2020, usership just continued to grow and grow and grow. Um, but with increased use, uh, 
presents more challenges for brands. So users just don't want to see what you what you see your brand. They want to connect with your brand on a deeper level. When people are following brands, they want it to be a part of their identity. And so you need to make them proud to follow you so that they uh, maintain fo their followership and they also recommend you to their friends and their family. Um, how do they connect with a brand? Like why would somebody, why would it really matter to somebody to follow and connect with the brand? What you need to do is be able to tell your brand story to your audience. It's no longer good enough to show them what you have to sell them um, or even tell them why they should buy or even solve a problem with what you're selling. You need to uh, tell them a story that makes them believe in a brand um, and, and elicit feelings that um, like great feelings when they're watching your brand. Unlike traditional advertising, like I said, it's not just about showing and telling, but your story inspires an emotional reaction. And you guys kind of all have seen this. So imagine a website that sells socks and you get to the website and they have beautiful socks and they're five bucks a pair and they're really nice and they would do the trick. Imagine another website that sells socks. They have really nice socks, they're five bucks a pair and they do the trick. But then imagine the owner is standing there with his son who also helps make the socks. And not only that, they're a Saskatchewan business and they work really hard for your business and they're smiling and now you've connected with that family. You can intuitively <clears throat> all decide right now that you know which website you'd be buying from. It would be the one that has the family story or the brand story. And that's as simple as it is. You need to set yourself apart from everybody else. <clears throat> Number two, and this is my favorite um, 2021 tip uh, since the pandemic has gone down, uh, went down, and that is it's time to pay attention to and prioritize older audiences. So in the past, um, social media marketing, super trendy, we're trying to get that young millennial audience, we want them to see our brands, we want to be popular. And due to stereotypes, ageism, and the habit of chasing newness over effectiveness left marketers underestimating the baby boomer crowd and older. And they didn't focus on this lucrative demographic. You think of this demographic, they have um, disposable income. Um, they're, very, they, they're just craving brands to come after them and, and recognize them and speak to them and say, hey, I want your business. Not only that, they are the fastest growing segment for social media use across the board. And so top recommendation for 2021 is to include baby boomers and over in your digital strategies because you will just leapfrog any brand that is still stuck in like the millennials are my key demographic on social media. Okay, uh, number three, and this is <clears throat> probably the reason why we saw such an uptake in usership and engagement on social media during the pandemic. Um, and that is that social media bridges the gap of human connection created by the pandemic by giving people a new customer service. So people were no longer able to walk into your store. Um, they didn't feel comfortable shopping as much as they used to or meeting with you. Now what they're doing is they're checking you out on social and they're connecting their new communities are being formed online because people create are still craving that human connection, but it's happening through social media. We always say to our customers and to potential customers and any business who needs advice that who you are on social media is who you are, period. It's no longer acceptable to have a great brick and mortar storefront with friendly staff, but leave your social media as a secondary um, priority and not have that exact culture 
reflected on your social media because this is where people are seeing you. And this is where you're interacting with more customers than ever. So how do you focus on building a quality social media following? Um, you need to offer customers, consumers exceptional customer service on social media. So like you said, you need to mirror that culture that you build within your organization it needs to be directly reflected on your social media. And that's by the way you speak to people, your brand voice, um, something as simple, as simple as how fast you respond to people's inquiries and messages, how fast you thank them for their comments, things like that. Um, and then you need to offer consumers digital experiences that win long-term loyal, loyalty by bringing discovery, connection, and fun back into the customer experience. So not only are they looking for <clears throat> customer service on your social media, they're also looking for your brand to entertain them. Okay, next I wanna go into consumer behavioral stats. So we wanna know what people, how people, how followers are behaving because studies indicate that your followers are your customers. 57% of consumers will follow a brand to learn about their new products and services. 91% of your followers on social media visit your brand's website or app. So they're moving, they're not just visiting social, they're going down the funnel and very close to the conversion when they visit your website or app. 89% of followers will buy from the brand. This is huge. So think about that. Almost 90% of the people who follow you will purchase your products. So that, that's how important it is to have a have a following on social media. And then 85% of those followers will recommend your brand to friends and family. So not only are pretty much all of them customers of your brand, all of them are brand ambassadors for your brand. And when they're recommending to your family and friends, you're getting free advertising. Word of mouth is still the best form of advertising, but the way people are talking has changed. You want your followers to recommend you to your friends and family and breed that free advertising and word of mouth for you. So simply put, your followers are your customers and are your biggest form of new business referrals. So now we need to talk about why somebody would unfollow a brand. And this will give you an indication on kind of what you kind of need to prioritize. And maybe if you've done something wrong in the past, you know where to correct. So 49% excuse me, unfollow due to poor quality products or support on social media. So if they've had a bad experience after, after they bought something or if they reached out for a complaint or if they reached out for it, like, hey, I want more information about this product and there's no support, half will unfollow you. 49% unfollow due to poor customer service on social media. So what is customer service on social media? Like I said, it's if somebody direct messages you um, you need to be responsive, just the same as if they were phoning your office and you were picking up the phone and saying, how can I help you? Um, uh, poor customer service can also be if they uh, read a review, if they wrote a review and you didn't respond. Essentially, you have to be active and you have to respond to people who are engaging with your page or half will unfollow you. 45% unfollow due to irrelevant content. So this goes into knowing your audience and providing a quality experience. So don't miss, don't make a mistake though. Some people think, well, people don't love to be, don't like to be advertised to. That's absolutely false. And think of yourselves. People love to be advertised to as long as what you're showing them benefits them and uh, offers value, so, solves a problem. Any of these things, 
people love the, to see advertisements. Where they don't want to see advertisements is if they can't connect and they can't see how your product will uh, benefit them. Um, furthermore, if you uh, create content that doesn't entertain them or doesn't offer something in it for them, whether it's telling your brand story that they can get behind, they'll unfollow you. And 45% unfollow due to too many ads. And so that's, again, where it's no longer acceptable to just show and tell what you have to offer and what you're selling. You also have to offer that uh, brand story to uh, foster that loyalty from your followers. So simply put, social media is not just a tool to so show your customers your products and services. More importantly, brands need to provide content that customers enjoy and ensure your social media platforms are a place customers can rely on for amazing customer service. And especially now, like we talked about with the gap of the pandemic where they can't easily visit you anymore. So I wanted to go into the different platforms to give you guys um, an idea of the importance because they're not all platforms are created equal. Um, and you might be wondering, which ones should I prioritize for my brand? And it is very recommended that you become really great at one or two platforms versus try to be everything to everybody on all platforms. And um, we'll go into that later about which ones are most important. So Facebook, definitely the most popular, it's the most popular platform across all segments across all age groups and the highest growing also offers the best uh, targeting tools um, definitely the sweet spot for that baby rumor crowd and uh, late millennials so it's a highest usership super easy to post and appropriate for virtually every brand another thing about facebook and why it's super important to have one for all brands is because um, the optimization on this platform is so great that you'll even notice sometimes that when you Google a certain brand, their Facebook platform will come up higher in the search rankings than their own website. And this is just because they are getting the advantage of Facebook's search engine optimization. Next, Instagram. So Instagram and Facebook are actually one in the same companies operating on two different platforms. Um, and why that matters is because um, Facebook has traditionally had the best targeting tools, the best way to capture audiences, the best algorithms. And now Instagram, through Instagram, you have access to all those great tools that Facebook provides. Um, it's a growing usership. Also easy posting, um, hashtags can help your brand and it's appropriate for more, most brands. And why I say most uh, and not all is because the audiences are not as forgiving on Instagram. Instagram audiences for the large part expect um, higher quality imagery and they are very choosy about who they follow. And so that much effort has to be put into a successful Instagram page. Twitter, um, <clears throat> it's very popular worldwide, but we find for our Western Canadian clients, it's not um, the best place to put the lion's share of your efforts. Um, with one exception, it's popular for Saskatchewan's egg industry and the egg industry around the world. It's more of a text messaging and conversational platform. So your brand should be there, but if you're going to prioritize your efforts with, and you're thinking of return on investment with respect to uh, building brand strength, building your online footprint and earning new customers, definitely Facebook and Instagram are the place to be over Twitter. LinkedIn. So. <clears throat> LinkedIn is also um, something I love to discuss because a lot of brands ignore it 
um, due to the fact that it's expensive to advertise on and it, see, it doesn't seem as popular as the other platforms. But where LinkedIn can really help brands is because it has the lowest posting um, on any platform. So what that means is on Facebook, where it's got the highest posting, so brands and people are posting constantly, you're fighting for that um, recognition and you're fighting for that space of people seeing your posts. Well, on LinkedIn, it has high, high usership and low posting rates with respect to usership. So brands that are posting are getting seen organically far more than if they are on Facebook and Instagram. So there's lots of opportunity on this platform right now to be seen. I mean, that might change as uh, people start getting, coming onto this fact, I guess, and start posting more as brands. But right now it's just, it's such a great space to be in because you have, I mean, the world is your oyster on LinkedIn. You post, you get lots of engagement. There's not a lot of content, so people are paying attention to you. It's mostly appropriate, though, um, for B2B audience, B2B businesses and professional organizations, with one exception. If your uh, business is a business where you um, your target audience could be very focused based on like a career or based on a certain lifestyle, LinkedIn is definitely something you want to check out because you can target people based on their positions. You can target people based on um, their job titles, uh, even the organizations that they work for. Um, and finally, <clears throat> the last one I want to discuss is Google My Business. So 15 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, the way you found a business was you grabbed your phone book and you opened the yellow pages and you looked up the category and then you had choices. Uh, consider Google My Business the thing that killed the yellow pages because now what people do and you all do it is you search on Google and then you find the business that either comes up first or is most appropriate to your search query. But you've all been there where you see that business listing on the side and it shows you the business name, directions, uh, high times where customers are there, the phone number, all this great information that traditionally that's where you'd find in the phone book. So why is it important to your business? It's super important to your business because it's free and um, you're basically missing out on a lot of organic search engine optimization if you don't have it live and updated. Um, with respect to updating, there's three main things that you should always do on Google My Business. So number one, make sure your information is accurate. Uh, number two, make sure that uh, you have photos of your storefront and inside your store so people can discover you. And number three, be sure that uh, you've claimed it and it's yours. And then just number four, on a side note for Google My Business, you want to be posting um, content to it. So anytime you have a social media post on Facebook where you have like an offer or you're describing a product, you also want to post that on your Google My Business so that Google's um, machines, I guess, can pick up on your keywords and the more active you are, the more they're going to favor you in search engines and things like that. So it's a really great tool. It's totally free and it's very intuitive. So if you're like, I have one, but I've never touched it. Don't be afraid. Just dive in and just follow the steps and it'll tell you exactly how to optimize it. <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to give you some easy steps to marketing your brand on social media for busy businesses. So I'm assuming that pretty much everyone who's watching this has a job aside from social media marketing. There's not a lot of organizations that have that person in their organization totally dedicated. And so we have, we have to use our resources the best we can. And so here are some high level steps.
Okay, so how to earn more customers organically on social media in four simple steps. Number one, you have to set a goal. And we've all learned the rules for goals. It has to be specific, measurable, time bound, all those things that a, a great goal needs to be. You need to set it for your social media marketing efforts. Um, a lot of people and business owners and managers and leaders that we meet are like, but I need to sell this and I need to sell that. And then I have this, uh, I have uh, this goal for spring. And then I have uh, this department that needs care. And oh, I want everybody to know about this as well. And then it's like, I'm not going to touch this because that just seems so overwhelming. So what you need to do is set one specific goal and work on that. And then as that goal develops, set another specific goal for your social media efforts and then work on that. And the reason why you need to do this is because those examples I just gave you of like overwhelming scenarios in every business also translate to social media. So you're on social media one day and this is viral and this customer, or this person is interacting and this audience member made this comment and I got this message and my secretary wants to do a post and my son wants to do a post. And then it's like, all of a sudden there's no strategy and there it's all over the map. So when you set a goal, you, you, you make it known to yourself that this is what I need to focus on. You make it known to your organization that this is what you need to focus on. And whenever you're navigating your content, you always frame it around that goal. And that is the best way to start because it, it'll, it'll, you'll just all of a sudden feel free and you're like, okay, I can do this. And you'll get to work and you'll ignore the noise. Number two is you need to establish your audience. So the audience you want to get your content in front of. Now, similar to goals, don't be like, well, I would love it if everybody in Saskatchewan saw my stuff. No, it ha that yes, you would, but how many percentage of those people are never gonna buy your product or never recommend you? So similar to establishing a specific goal, it's very important that you establish a specific audience. And the way we do this is just grab a piece of paper and write down your persona. Be like, okay, for this goal, this is what I want my customer to look like. She's probably in her mid thirties. She probably has a couple kids at home. She's got a job. She um, loves to spend money on, um, I don't know, makeup, luxury items. Her spare time, she goes to spin class. Like you start creating this persona and then all of a sudden you know exactly who you're talking to and exactly who you want to um, see your brand. Now, side note, one of the biggest fails that happen within organizations that we work with is that people start to market to audiences that look exactly like themselves. So be sure that whoever's handling your marketing steps back and creates an audience that is not themselves because what happens is is they start to create content that they like and just because you like your content so if my target audience is a baby boomer male who likes to golf he's not going to like the same content that i do so an inexperienced marketer this always drifts you they start to we start to see analytics that are directly reflective of the characteristic of the person who's creating the marketing. So what you need to do is you need to establish that from the start and be sure that everybody knows in your organization that this content doesn't need to be appealing to me. It needs to be appealing to the people we're trying to sell to and drive that home. Uh, not only that, um, you need to create content that no matter who your audience is, they will enjoy. And then number four, you need to connect with your community. So connecting with your community so it's not all about social media on a high level is let's create great content let's push it out there and let's hope people see it that's the end of the story right no the number one way to earn loyalty and to um have a great social media presence that actually turns into sales is to treat it like you're being involved in a community and like start building those communities around your brand. And how do you do that? How you do that is by 
interacting with other brands by following other people who you're interested in and who you'd like to see your brand following other brands commenting on the, the content of other brands commenting on your customers brands or sorry on your customers uh, platforms and always like getting like feedback from your customers and building that brand loyalty by acknowledging any other comments and things like that um, for every single brand that we work on here at wow factor media and every single brand that we've trained to do a uh, great social media marketing this is where we focus the most and this is new like this is like within the last year this is where the focus needs to be made like you have to focus on building your community and it's as simple as following others commenting others in an organic and authentic way and uh liking what other people are doing versus constantly being like look at me look at me Okay, so going deeper into creating content focused on what your audience will enjoy. So, um, like I mentioned before, it's really uh, easy to be like, okay, here, I have a great product for you. It solves a problem for you. And yeah, people will probably, the right people will probably enjoy that. Uh, but we're talking about enjoy, but then also foster brand loyalty and it's never a good idea to have the majority of your content to be all about your products and services so um i have a little challenge here for everybody here if you want to create uh content that your audience will enjoy will enjoy commit to creating two posts per week um that one shows your business behind the scenes so your team, your operation, your history, or your cool facts. And then secondary, show a post showing your products or services. Now, going back to showing your business behind the scenes, this can be casual, but then also be sure that it's within your brand standards. Um, don't show anything that you would, that maybe would be like proprietary or like, too casual you're going to need to establish like what that barrier is but i'm just going to give you an example of like a post that went really well for us for example so um we don't show a lot behind the scenes just because like there's tons of like confidential stuff happening with customers but one time uh one of our web developers i walked in to her office and she was eating her goldfish crackers with chopsticks <laughs> I immediately took a picture and we laughed and I was like, okay, what are you doing? And then she was like, well, I need to eat this with, I need to use chopsticks because I brought my, I bring my own keyboard every day because it's a special keyboard for me. And after hours I game with this keyboard and I can't get food in it because if food gets in it, then my game, my gaming, whatever is all screwed up. So all of a sudden we had like a hilarious picture. We had a hilarious story about like the human side of wow factor media. Like we're not just a bunch of machines pushing out great marketing. Like these are real people who have like real quirks and like it really showed like the softer side of our brand. And so try to get things that are in the moment that like show like the people behind making things happen at your uh, organization and you'll do really well. Okay, so next, going to products and services. So um, your challenge is to create two posts per week at minimum, one showing behind the scenes, one showing products or services. Now I'm going to go through best practices for um, putting out your products and services because at the end of the day, that's what we do for a living and people wanna see it as long as we do it right. So copy, well, content, sorry, for showing off your products and services uh, must have four main things. So number one, a hook. Number one, number two, it must give your, get, show value to your audience. Number three, a call to action with a way to act. Uh, number four, hashtags. And number five, a great photo, a great photo. Okay. So how do we write a great hook? So think about this. As you're scrolling through social media, 
what are you paying attention to? So you see the pictures and you see the videos. And if something tricks your eye or you see something that you like, you hover. Then you start to read the copy. Now, if the copy is boring or not what you thought it was or doesn't do justice to the picture, you keep scrolling. So how do we get people to actually stop and read on? Because we want to tell them this product solves a problem for them or it's going to enhance their life. How we do that is through a strategic hook. So think of a hook like a newspaper headline. It should make your reader feel like you're speaking directly to them. It should be easy to read, short and to the point, and make your reader want to read on. Two, three, four words max. Think of like when newspapers first came about uh, at the turn of the century, extra, extra is like the original hook that made people, drew, drew people in. It's as simple as that. So here are some ideas on some great hooks. Ask your audience a question. Single out your audience like, hey, farmers, hey, moms, hey, teachers, so that people know you're talking directly to them. Or educate your audiences by offering a stat or a did you know. People love cool facts, stats. Next, so number two on creating great content, you need to let people know why they should care. So you need to tell your audience how what you're offering them benefits them or solves a problem for them. And you need to think about the reasons why people buy. So there are many different pe reasons why people buy, but like some of them are because they want to uh, be seen. They want to, uh, they want, they're looking for a little luxury in life. Like everyone thinks on a high level that Starbucks sells coffee. But what Starbucks actually sells is tiny luxuries that we can all afford. The $6 coffee is something that uh, makes us feel like we're spoiling ourselves, but that we can frame um, as a luxury in our lives. So think about why people buy and tell your audience how what you're offering them is going to enhance their lives. Uh, and let's just go in quickly to top reasons why people buy. Um, and these are like the top 10 reasons. So to enhance your status, to make a dream come true, to make amends, to be defiant. Someone says to you, well, you can't afford that. So you go buy it anyways, just to kind of prove to them to feel good. So we've all heard of like retail therapy. Um, to make a statement, uh, we want to, uh, we just got a new position, so we buy ourselves a new purse, uh, to feel safe, it's the whole reason why the insurance industry exists, uh, why alarm systems e exist, um, to forget our problems, this is huge, uh, we, uh, right now, during the pandemic, the way people forgot their problems was by having a Netflix account and by hitting the buy button on Amazon, we all do it. Or the la lastly, to reward ourselves. Third part of creating great content is um, telling your audiences what to do or asking for the business. I always say to the people I train and to my staff, to the people on our social media marketing team, never, ever, ever be afraid to ask for the business and tell people exactly how they need to buy. People want you to. They want buying to be as easy as possible. Brands who make it easy to buy are the ones who sell. And it's as simple as that. So how do you do that? You, you have a call to action. Your job is to make it as easy as possible for your audience to act in order to facilitate your goals. So whether that's buy your product, uh, learn more about uh, a service, um, whatever your goal is, you have to make it as easy as possible for them to help you achieve it. So tell them exactly what you want them to do as a, as a result or as a result of reading your post. So examples are learn more on our website, uh, call us today, send us a direct message. Um, side note on direct messaging. We have found, and this is some insider information based on our analytics, that by focusing on co content that has direct messaging as a call to action, there's been huge success lately. And we attribute it to, this is like 
the way customers are starting to real, feel really comfortable contacting brands, it's similar to a text message. There's very low commitment, but they get their message to you and then the ball's in your court. And the reason why it's so awesome is because like you now have that lead. You now have that connection with the person and now you can talk to them and sell them. You, and just so really, if I could uh, offer anything here, really try out the uh, send us a direct message call to action. You, you sh will probably see some big success for your brands. So a good call to action must always have an easy way to do it. So think of this. I, I, I cringe when I see call us today, but there's no phone number or visit my website and there's no direct link that people can visit. You have to make it as easy as possible. People are not going to, you're not going to say call today and people are not going to then go on Google and search your Google My Business listing and find your phone number and then type it in. Chances are that's not going to happen unless they're really, really close to making a purchase decision. So how do you uh, get them closer? You make it as easy as possible by providing the number directly or providing the website directly. Um, <clears throat> and then just a little bit of insight on website URLs. And this is super intuitive and you might already be doing it, but just to reiterate, you want to take people to the landing page that is more, that is of highest relevancy to the, to what you're showing them. So what I mean by that is if you are talking about a specific product, take them to the space on the website that ex is where that product lives. If you are asking them to contact you for more information, don't take them to the homepage take them to the contact page so that it's just a couple of clicks away. Because what happens is, is people start clicking around and then before you know it, they forgot they needed to contact you or why they wanted to contact you. So just make it as easy as possible for them to facilitate the conversion. Okay, so that those are the steps. And, and uh, the one, sorry, I'm missing a slide. The step for your copy within that is your hashtags. You need to have strategic hashtags within your uh, copy so that, especially with the new um, iOS rules. So recently, Apple told Facebook with our new operating system, you're not going to have access to all these great things that people are doing on their phone. So you, we've all kind of been there where you have Googled something on your phone or you've been messaging your friend about something on your phone. And then you go back to Facebook and you get a creepy or mysterious, like how the heck did they know that I wanted this product because you get an ad for it on your newsfeed. And if you didn't turn your hot mic off and you were talking about it with a friend, up pops an ad. So Apple, and, and there's speculation as to why they're doing it. Some say they're trying to be in the same competitive space as Google. Some say that they want a piece of the ad pie from Facebook. Whatever the reason, they're not giving Facebook all these tools anymore. So what does that mean? That means our organic reach is uh, infinitely more important now than it ever was because we don't have, we still can do uh, targeting, but we don't have like all those deep, deep tools from iPhones. So hashtags help with that. And um, when you create hashtags, never do a hashtag that's like hashtag I hate Mondays or hashtag isn't my puppy cute or hashtags we're working hard. Like those like kind of like cool, like cheeky hashtags that you can use on a personal level don't serve brands. You want to do hashtags that'll serve you based on what your audiences are following. So be strategic. If you um, our uh, hotel chain, for example, hashtag explore Sask. Like it, it just do what your audience would be following to get in front of the right people. Okay, so in addition to copywriting, good content should have good imagery. Right now, the trend is, um, and I don't think it's going away, but uh, interesting high definition photos um, are performing by far and away the best. And these are real photos. Try to avoid stock if at all possible. And it, every, every brand is different. Like if you're more of a, like a professional brand, like a law firm or something like that, like stock photography definitely has its purpose. If you're more of a retail space, um, get creative and start, start taking your own HD photos. Um, and you don't need the $5,000 camera 
or the expensive lighting system to create these photos. You need a great iPhone or Samsung, um, like one of the latest, like even if, like I have a 10 and it works awesome. Um, I want a 12 <laughs> because there's even more features, but cell phone pics work great. And not only that, there's tons of apps out there right now that'll add those great filters for you. One to write down to check out later um, if you're interested in creating better photos with better filters is uh, uh, an app called Snapseed by Google. Um, that one works really nice. But all in all, uh, high def photos perform the best. High def photo tricks. Not only do high def photos uh, perform the best, high def photos with people by far and away perform the best. So resist the urge to be like, okay, I have this product, it's sitting on the shelf. I'm gonna take a really beautiful picture and place a really good filter of this product sitting on the shelf. It is not gonna go as far as if you put it in your hands and showed people with a smiling, authentic, genuine look on your face that you want them to see this product. So always include people when, whenever possible and your analytics will just go through the roof. Um, short videos. Okay, so brands struggle a lot with this because um, you think I need, I need to put a video out there and I need everybody to know everything there is to know about what this video is about. And you end up creating a minute or three minute long video. And you're like, I can't cut it down because if I cut it down, nobody will know what I'm talking about. So what was the point of the video? But trust me, no one's watching past 30 seconds. Rarely. You're, so you don't, there's no point in talking past 30 seconds because nobody's even watching it. Go, don't ever post a video over 30 seconds. How you get around that is post a video, a short, sweet, to the point video, and then have a call to action like visit our website or direct message us to learn more. So not only does that take away the boring video that people are literally just gonna scroll past, you've asked them to act and you're gonna get that lead. Um, side note, 30 seconds is actually even a little bit long. Great videos, say it all in 15 seconds or less. And trust me, you'll, you'll, it's more of a challenge. It's very hard to get a great compelling message that says it all in 15 seconds or less. But you need to challenge yourself to do that because that's where people are paying attention. After that, you've lost the lion's share of your audience and you might as well not put it out there anyways. Um, third on the list is you can add some branding and flair to your photos and your videos. So keep this minimal as a general rule of thumb. So include it to logos, maybe a banner. Um, and a lot of brands are using Canva to spruce up their photos and videos with branding. Um, there is like a trend though, where brands, Canva, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but what it is, is it's a graphic design app that essentially allows anyone who, who a regular Joe, including myself, who does not have a degree in graphic design to go on and create graphic designs. The problem with the app is that it's super fun and you just like, you, you think your designs are amazing and there's all these tools and you want to add all these stickers. And it's like, you get, you go down rabbit holes and then before you know it, you have like a design that, yeah, looks great. It's got all the elements, but doesn't go anywhere because it's too much. Our analytics tell us that high def photos and high def photos of people perform the best. So resist the urge to use all those fancy tools that Canva offers and keep it simple. <clears throat> okay, so the last slide that I wanna go into is a bonus. And this is, I talked earlier about how great content is obviously what social media marketing is all about for brands. But recently, um, organic engagement and followers are now more important than ever with the new iOS and with building communities because of the pandemic, getting rid of that gap that's now created with customer connections. You need to build your brand and footprint and, and uh, build your brand value and, and organic engagement. So three tips on how to do that. And it's really simple. And I guarantee you, if you follow these three steps every single day, 
it's going to have a huge impact on your brand. Yeah. Number one, follow brands who your customers follow. <clears throat> so how you find this is go through your follower list. And we know from the stats that our follower list is reflective of who our customers are and start taking a peek at who they follow and follow those brands um, to get ideas and insights on what people like to look at. And then you'll be able to like create content that's reflective of these other brands and you'll just create so much synergy there. Also follow hashtags that your customer follow. So um, on Instagram, you can search out hashtags and it'll show you the top performing posts in the world based on those hashtags. So imagine you are in a space, like an agricultural space, for example, and you search hashtag agriculture, and then you see like the top performing posts. Now your customers are also egg customers. So now you've got an idea of what people love and you can create content um, based on ideas like theirs. And there's no, no fault in checking out what's trending and doing it for your brand as well. I don't, I'm not saying copy direct, but you need to know what's popular with people. Um, number three, spend 20 minutes a day logging into your social media platform. So specifically uh, Facebook and Instagram and Google My Business um, to engage with your customers, other brands, and other members of your community that align with your brand by following, commenting, and sharing their content. And you have to do this in a, a genuine way, and it, you don't need to overthink it. A comment can, simple, can simply be, I love this, or good job, or very cool. Like it can just think of your brand, think of your brand voice, and get out there and start paying people compliments and paying attention to others. When you start paying attention to others, just like anything else, what goes around comes around. And that's it for me. And I'll open it up to questions. So I think I'm looking in the chat. <clears throat> For questions, I can't remember what she said. If anybody has one. It will be the Q&A box that you check. We have four questions so far. Okay, let me open that box up. Sorry, I don't know where the Q&A box is. Is it? It should be on the ribbon in the bottom. If you stop sharing your screen, it will show up okay. right there. But probably it. Oh, there it is. Yep, you're right. Okay. So, Joanne, how do you feel about asking a follower to contact you via email to do business? We have so many people that ask us for our products over social media. Um, what do you mean by this? Like, do you mean people are like, asking to purchase or like are they are they are they saying like I want to buy this can you send it to me I, I sort of it's just kind of unclear uh, Joanne Joanne can type on the chat box to clarify but I don't know if oh okay she probably can't respond okay um Oh, here, I think she's written something. They're asking for a quote. Yeah, so um, yeah, that's totally fine to be like, hey, thanks for reaching out. Uh, do you mind emailing? Just don't be like um, robotic about it. Like, don't be like, thanks for reaching out. Uh, our office hours are this. If you want something, send us an email because then they're gonna feel like their business doesn't matter. You're gonna wanna like talk to them as if you picked up the phone hey, thanks, we can definitely help you with that. Do you wanna email me and I'll give you more information and leave it at that. And then if they don't ever email you, then you can go back and be like, hey, like, did you have trouble with the email? Like really humanize it, never, never automate it. Just be sure you're there and friendly. And if they say, well, no, I'd rather have a quote on here. Cool, I want your business. So I'm gonna give you the quote the way you want it kind of thing is would be my recommendation. Um, okay, so how many baby boomers are, oh, 
on social media? How do you connect with them? Uh, okay, so I don't know the exact stats, but I think like upwards of like 75% of the baby boomer population are on social media and it's the fastest growing demographic. How do you connect with them? You create, you create your persona, like create your target audience based on who they are and create your goal based on what you want to sell to them. And then just start creating content that they'll enjoy. Um, follow brands that are like really heavily focused on this group to see what they're doing. And um, you can add like a paid strategy where you target your ads directly at this age group. Um, and yeah, it'll work really well. Okay, no problem, Joanne. Melanie is next can you give examples of marketing goals that are attainable for saskatchewan business is it as simple as adding x amount of new clients sell x quantity of items that's a great question so it's different for every business so um i would say like if you're I can give you a really specific um, answer, Melanie, if you want to respond, like what space you're in. Um, if you don't want to share that, I can give you a broader answer, but I'll give you a second to tell me if you want like a specific example. Oh, and there we go. I'm in services, graphic design. Okay, so I would say that you are, so your goal then is to sell more of your graphic design services. Um, and on a high level to get your feet wet, you should be like, okay, I want something that's really measurable, right? Like I want to gain, I want 20 people to reach out to me this week and ask me what I can offer them. Cool. Now all the content you create has that call to action. Ask me how I can help. I'd love to help you. I'm open for business. Um, saying like, oh, I need to increase my business by say like $1,000 a month is not going to be as serving. So think of like actions that you can directly measure on social media. Um, okay, so Jessica, how long, oops, how long do you typically plan a social media strategy to be? 30 days, months, clear. Great question. Um, social media, you need everyone in this group, listen up you need to consider this as a top priority for your business. It is a marathon, not a sprint. Although you will have blitz campaigns, you need to have like your strategy needs to be planned as if you plan your budget. Um, so that being said, like plan it as you know what's going on with your business. If you know that your goal in 2021 is to expand a, a certain product line, then you need to have a campaign that reflects that. If you have a brand new product and it's limited and uh, we expect it to sell out within 30 days, then that's fine. You can plan a strategy for that specific goal in 30 days. It's very, it's very fluid, but all in all, your efforts need to be consistent and they're here to stay. Successful businesses will never leave this on the back burner. It's something that you have to integrate as part of your business plan. Julie. How might you encourage a Facebook follower to sign up to your email list? Hmm, good idea, good, good, good point. So actually email marketing has emerged as like a very successful way that people are earning customers. Uh, studies show that um, email marketing um, converts, like the conversions are a lot higher uh, versus social media marketing. But people are using social media marketing as a tool to gain um, those email audiences. So there's actually a tool on Facebook where you can um, ask people to sign up for your e-blast. And you can send out posts with that or you can uh, do ads that ask people to sign up for your e-blast as well. How do you feel about brands doing giveaways to increase engagement and followers? Okay, I, this is a loaded answer, a loaded question with a loaded answer. If you have a business that absolutely everybody in the world, 90% of the world can 
enjoy your products or is a potential customer. So for example, you sell something that's like um, really low cost and a really saturated space, like, I don't know, a hot dog or cheap booze or um, socks, like literally everybody likes those things and buys those things go ahead and do giveaways where you're trying to gain followers. But other than that, do never ever, my advice from my experience with social media marketing is never do an enter to win by following my page contest. And because the answer is simple, you're inviting people to follow you who will never buy and really don't care about your brand. And that affects you in so many ways. So first of all, you've got a bunch of people there that you don't know if they're the right target audience. You don't know who you're speaking to. Your engagement's low and you can't figure it out. Well, it's because they don't care. They only wanted to win the prize. And second, there's a really great tool in Facebook and Instagram where you can, art, where you can target um, your audiences that have engaged with your brand on Facebook and Instagram. And so it's a very like... Um, it's like a low hanging fruit audience. They've already engaged with your brand. Now you're showing them an ad to them. So if they've chosen to engage with your brand because they love your content, they love your products, they love what you're doing and you advertise to these people, that's a super high quality ad. But if they've chosen to follow you because they wanted to win a prize, that ad now is useless to you and you've lost out on that great tool. So yes and no, no, unless you're like a super like, your brand that everybody needs. Um, you had mentioned Facebook, that Facebook was great. This is from Elizabeth. However, it seems that many posts are not shared with my followers. So do you mean that you're creating content that you're um, having a hard time getting people to share? Is that what you mean by that question, jo or Elizabeth? Um, I, I'll give you a chance to answer that. And I think I missed one here. Melanie says, would the same tips apply to service-based businesses? Often marketing tips sound like they're aimed at those selling products. And the answer is yes. Yeah. If you put your lens on, if you sell services, put the, put that service lens on and um, you can watch this uh, presentation again, and it will definitely apply across service-based businesses as well. Um, the, for Sheila, what is the Facebook tool called? Do you mean like the advertising tool or which tool would, did you want more info on for Sheila? And Elizabeth, they don't seem to see your posts. Okay. So I think, so social media marketing is not easy. It's easy to put out content, but it's not easy to put out content that becomes popular. So if you follow the steps that we went through here, Elizabeth, by like creating like engaging headlines, using high def photos, including a call to action. So if you want people to share, ask them to share. Um, and then furthermore, start engaging with other community members. So flip your switch and be like, you know what? They're not, they're not looking at what I'm doing. So I'm going to start looking at what they're doing. You'll start, your brand will start to get recognized and it'll start to come back with you. So just follow those tips and I think you'll see a great improvement. Um, oh, okay, so um, you mentioned, so you're talking about the tool for email blasts and then the target audience. So <clears throat> the tool for email blasts is just um, like a call to action button. And it's, a uh, Oh, it's on the left-hand screen of your Facebook homepage, but you have to have like a email CMS that goes with it, like MailChimp, for example. Um, and feel free to like email me if you want like deeper explanation on that, because I could walk you through showing you how to do it. Um, and then <clears throat> for target audiences, you can use the, it's a simple, so there's two sides to Facebook advertising and Instagram advertising. There's like the regular like boost or sponsored posts that like I'm 
sure most people are familiar with, but then there's like the background ads manager that gives you like a more robust, deeper, better toolkit. Um, but targeting baby boomers by age and geographic area is available on the, uh, the, uh, just the regular boost post feature, um, creating those audiences that I talked about of people who engage with your page. That's more, um, of a background ad strategy, but free and available to any brand. I think that is all the questions. Thank you so much, Ashley, for taking your time today and um, answering all the questions and delivering such a wonderful presentation. I know that everybody definitely appreciates. And thank you for all of those who took time um, for your, for, from your busy days to join us for our webinar. And don't forget that our marketing series continues. Next week, we ask Kevin Hayes to present to us about creating a web presence. You do not want to miss this. Registration is now open for it. And um, I will now end the webinar, but oh, is there one more question? I, I did have no. one more thing to say um, that it, there is like a huge opportunity right now for organizations right now, Josie. Um, the government of Saskatchewan is offering fully funded um, marketing workshops hosted by Wow Factor Media. That's a $2,500 course that you can apply for to get absolutely free. And it teaches you like over uh, several days how to uh, have a great social media presence. So I just wanted to let everybody know about that because it uh, expires March 31st. So time's running out and everybody could use it. Okay, hey, that's wonderful. I will attach the link to what you just said to the follow-up um, email that goes out okay. tomorrow to all the that's attendees. Good. Thank you so much for sharing awesome. that. No problem. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Bye.